Hello and welcome to the Calmcast, a time to feel calm and think clearly. I'm Claire Downham, the Queen of Calm, a transformational life coach. I was a burnt out head teacher who finally made the journey to calm after years of trying and I want to prevent you from having to do the same. The Calm Cast is a series of short explorations, gently guiding you back to your natural state, which is calm and clarity. Just listen like you would listen to music, with an open mind and curiosity. There's nothing else to do. Now let's relax into today's episode. The word I'm considering today is happiness. It is often discussed out there in the world, particularly in the world of self-development. There's a sense of seeking it, of trying to create more of it. And I suppose that's where I'm going to start today. I spent years trying to make myself more happy by managing the outside world. That did not go well for me. Um, it, it eventually ended up with a really quite serious burnout emotionally and physically and put me in a place of not being able to work for a year. I had for years been told the same thing that probably you have. Happiness works outside in. If we get all those things in place, all those things that we think should be part of our lives, the, the job, the qualifications, the, the, the partner of our dreams, the children, the house, whatever it is you have been told, this sense that success leads to happiness and that eventually we will reach a point in life where all the little pieces are in place or all, all the things are organized and sorted for us and then and then we will experience this happiness now that's a layer and i hope i hope that if you've looked in any direction towards self development you've started to see that it doesn't really work that way happiness doesn't really come from the outside. Um, there's there's a, a really good book called The Happiness Advantage I read ages ago by Sean Aker, I think. Anyway, in that book, the, the, the concept is the other way around. The people who are the most happy, most content, they are the ones who will generally be more successful in the world anyway. Whatever success is, that is also a made-up concept, of course. So there's a sense then, perhaps, that happiness can come from within us. But that is also a great big scary trap, <laughs> just to let you know. Because what people often read into that is, if I'm lacking happiness, then there's some things to do in the outside world to me. Not, not that I need to manage my outside circumstances and have the right amount of clients and money and whatever else. But that, that okay, if it's about me, then I must manage me. I must do some things to me to attain this thing called happiness. And so starts the self-development hamster wheel. And um, hands up anybody who's been on that. I certainly was for a very, very long time. Once I got this idea that happiness was an inside job, that it came from within me, then it looked like, OK, right, well, there's some things for me to do then to be more happy. Some techniques and tools so that I can actually experience more happiness. So there's a sense there that we're this, and it doesn't just, it's not just happiness, is it? There's so many other words I could speak to, like confidence and resilience and determination, where we have the sense that we are somehow lacking those things, somehow they're missing from us. 
other people might have them, but we haven't somehow. We somehow missed in the line. We didn't get, <laughs> we didn't get it. We, we missed out somehow. And so we've got now to put it back in, in some way, by doing something to us. And I've referred to this before, but that doesn't make sense when you look at tiny children. And you see, you know, uh, how happy they are most of the time, how they, you know, they very quickly pass out of any state that's not happiness and contentment how they have this innate resilience and confidence and all those things we think we've got to get from outside of us. So if that's the case, then how do we need to have it added back in when we're born with it? We're born happy. You only have to look into the eyes of a baby to see that. And of course, in this space where we are, on the self-development hamster wheel, where we are continually doing to us things to try and sort out this happiness, to try and bring more of it into our lives or more of anything else for that matter. We have an increased busyness in our heads. And busyness does not facilitate happiness, contentment, peace, calm, any of those things. But what if we just completely turned all of this on its head? What if we said, you and I and everybody else has this amazing, unique and wonderful innate well-being? Your well-being, your contentment, your happiness are absolutely always on board. They're always inside you. They're always there. Now, where you don't see it is because you've got a head full of other things. It's like you've got a dirty windscreen. You just can't see it for a while sometimes. But have you noticed that the times when you really do truly feel moments of happiness, of contentment, when you really feel connected to your own well-being, when you get that deep sense, oh, you know what, I'm okay doesn't have to be any more than that. It doesn't have to be, you know, fireworks going off and cymbals crashing and, you know, streamers. Just this deep sense of being okay. Have you noticed that that comes when your mind is quieter? When you've got less on your mind? It's not about a creating, it's about a seeing. There's nothing to create. There's just things, there's just something to see. Something in you that's always there, but sometimes you don't see because you've got a lot on your mind. Now, if you're continually on a self-development hamster wheel, if you are continually trying to fix yourself all the time, then you will have a busier mind and I suspect you're less likely to see your innate well-being. You'll see glimpses of it. Probably when you've done something that quietens your mind down. But you you won't connect to it on that. You'll always feel like there's something else to do to connect to it, to feel okay, to get where you want to go. I, I went round and round that, that circle. It did feel like a hamster wheel going round and round because... I would feel okay and then I would not feel okay and then I would do something and get very busy headed about what wasn't okay and of course in that place I didn't see what was okay about me. <laughs> now I see it so much more every day. You know you are so much more like the weather than than anything else. You're not a car that needs fixing. You're like the weather or you're like nature whichever you want to, well, the weather's part of nature, isn't it? But you're part of that. And as soon as you start to see that, this natural system that really just always wants to reset you back to calm and reset you back to seeing your well-being and reset you back to happiness and contentment, it, it just needs to be allowed to do that. 
It's about allowing it to do that. That's what works. Because you don't have to do the work. You just have to know it's there and keep looking in that direction. And that is pretty much the conversation that I love to have. To just keep pointing you back to your own natural well-being, your innate happiness and contentment that are always there. I hope, I really hope you found that um, helpful today. Thank you so much for listening. There's nothing to do now but bring some awareness to how this is working out in your life. Listen regularly to experience longer and longer periods of calm. This has been the Calm Cast with Claire Downham, Queen of Calm. Take care and keep listening.